just like any other item, vehicles such as cars and boats also have a short lifespan and end up in a junkyard to be destroyed or left unattended. But not all vehicles made it to the dump site because some were deliberately dumped on the side of the road and other isolated places, including new cars. Initially, there was only one, then started to increase until finally it became a dumping ground for used vehicles that had piled up, abandoned and neglected for years, leaving them covered in dust, weeds, rusting, and of course rot. And if you look closely, it looks like a grave with a tense and creepy silence like the following places. And here is a list of the vehicle's final resting place. Volkswagen Graveyard In September 2015, Volkswagen was involved in the diesel gate case which left hundreds of thousands of units in the United States affected. But a problem arises. Where do all the recalled cars go? And this is where the grave of Volkswagen diesel gate comes in. Volkswagen finally found a large place in the area in Victorville, California and made it a resting place for the car victims of the diesel gate case. Footage taken by routers shows the number of cars parked there. These cars have been brought back by VW. And it also turns out that VW is not the only parking lot in Victorville but there are also 37 spots spread across the United States that are owned by this car manufacturer and can accommodate up to 300,000 units. I don't know whether the land is sufficient to accommodate all these recall cars because the total number of units affected by the diesel gate case reached 500,000 units while VW was only able to recall 350,000 units. This means that there are still 150,000 units left that have not been taken by VW. This recall process is carried out in stages until the end of 2019, where Volkswagen spent 25 billion US dollars to finance the diesel gate recallment. And they are currently temporarily stored and routinely maintained to maintain quality over the long term so that once US regulators approve appropriate emission modification, they can be sold or re exported to the global auto market. Motorcycle Graveyard Hangzhou City is one of the most attractive places in China with its various natural beauty and culture. This city of 4 million people suffers from air pollution though for almost half a year, the length of time because of the smoke from motor vehicles. This led to the government to decide to issue regulations prohibiting the use of old vehicles that do not meet minimum emission standards. And as a replacement, the mayor of Hangzhou announced that he will replace it with a 2500 public vehicle with the new energy that is more environmentally friendly and will not pollute the air. Because of these regulations, thousands of old vehicles, including motorbikes, taxis, buses, private cars, have entered the vehicle dumps and recycling centers. You will find mountains of piles of motorized vehicles untouched by the crusher. The shelter for old vehicles is like a lonely graveyard but filled with dead vehicles. Even though the Hangzhou government has prepared so many shelters, there are still more vehicles than what has been provided. Barn Find Barn Find may be quite popular among automotive enthusiasts. Hunter classic cars that are not used and then restore the vehicle to become like new has become a hobby of vehicle hunters. If usually the cars were found in a warehouse, this time was different. A classic car hunter, Tom Cotter, has found a used car. Not just one or two vehicles, but more than 1,800 classic cars that have been discarded by their owners and widespread in the wild field located in California. It was the Kuyama Historical Car Garden, a park nearly three times the size of a football field and had been the graveyard of abandoned cars over the years, with nearly 2,000 more vehicles wasted here. In this place, records a lot of diamonds scattered in this area which can later be restored and made the vehicles looking like new again. 
of the many classic cars, Isetta Tom saw a 1969 Jaguar XK150 which he thought could be restored if he received sufficient funds. Unfortunately, these vehicles are not for sale, but for an exhibition in the collection of the owner who has collected more than 2,000 used cars in that place, but at least Tom was satisfied to see thousands of classic cars abandoned in the field. Boneyard Are you wondering where the fleet of aircraft that is old and no longer fit for operation has gone? Well, in the United States, there are airplane boneyards and aircraft graves that have accommodated hundreds of fleets since 1946. The place is the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group or in short AMARG at the Davis Monthan Air Force Base, Tucson, Arizona, which is touted as the world's largest aircraft gear graveyard. This place is familiarly referred to as the Boneyard. The population of AMARG is home to a fleet of more than 4,000 military and government aircraft, starting from aircraft belonging to Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, NASA, and other government institutions. The wreckage of the plane was not left behind. There are 550 million employees to make maintain planes at AMARG, and most of them are civilians. Tucson was chosen as the destination for the airplane burial because of its low humidity and low rainfall. In addition, the soil is dry, alkaline, and is located at an altitude of 2,550 feet, and this condition was deemed appropriate to keep the aircraft fleet durable. Aircraft that have been parked for less than three years are still likely to be reused. The dry geographical conditions help the fleet stay in sharp when parked. Interestingly, AMARG provides an opportunity for tourists who are curious about airplane graves. Tourists can take a bus tour around the boneyard starting near the Pima Air and Space Museum. Guided, the tour is open for the public Monday through Friday except for federal holidays. For one and a half hours, tourists can enjoy the AMARG view from the bus because tour participants or passengers are not allowed to get off. Of course, plane graves in the United States aren't just in Tucson. In Mojave, California, there is a Mojave Air and Spaceport for the storage, maintenance, and dismantling of commercial aircraft. Many airplane graves are also located in airport areas, such as Sukarno Hatta Airport. According to the latest aircraft recycling standards, as much as 85% of aircraft parts are usable. However, it can take weeks to dismantle the whole plane. Airlines usually sell their abandoned fleets to third parties who are eyeing reusable part of the aircraft such as iron and platinum. Luxury Car Graveyards Dubai City has long been widely known as the home of super-rich billionaires who love to collect exorbitant priced cars. Because there are so many rich people in this city, some time ago there was a new regulation that poor people who earn below the minimum line cannot own a private car. The economic conditions in this rich country are very different from those in our homeland. Even their law enforcers have their line of luxury cars and sports cars. Considering the wealth of masters in Dubai, what will their luxury ride be like if it's damaged later? If it can't be handled, most of the cars will end up in a car graveyard. You see, there are dozens of old luxury sports cars and supercars covered in dust, including many Mercedes, BMW, and Range Rover cars. Even a limited edition Ferrari Enzo, which only has 399 units in the world and a selling price of US$.5 million, is sitting motionless in the cemetery. There used to be a billionaire who was willing to let go of his private island to get this Enzo Ferrari. Châtillon For those of you who like historical tours, the following villages in northern Belgium should not be missed. The reason is that in the village, there is a forest that stores the historical value from the era of the Second World War. In a forest in Châtillon, near a village in northern Belgium, there is a large parking lot filled with old cars left from World War II. Historically, these cars were vehicles of United States troops during World War II. And when World War II was over, American troops were drawn back to their country. Because the cost of bringing these vehicles was too expensive, they finally decided to leave the vehicles. 
However, the residents assume that the old cars were made after the Second World War. Initially, there were four points in the old car parking area with the number of cars reaching 500 units. Unfortunately, many mischievous hands stole these historic cars for private collections. Currently though, the ancient car parking area leaves only one point. The place is one of the silent witnesses of the Second World War, which involves many countries in the world from 1939 to 1995. The war, which ended about 70 years ago, is now history. Boat Salvage This shipwreck cemetery is located at Arthur Kill and Rosville on the north coast of Staten Island, New York. It is recognized as an official dump for fishing boats, cargo or cargo ships, and damaged and obsolete ferries. These ships, which have been deliberately left to muddy and shallow waters to rot, date from all decades of the 20th century. Some of these are of historical value including the Hunter Submarine USS PC-1264 and the first US Navy ship in World War II to have an African-American crew. Owning historic ships makes this place also called the Accidental Maritime Museum. Even though it is difficult to reach and even has a no trespassing sign on it, many visitors still come to this place. They look at the wrecks by boarding a small boat or kayaking and taking photos of the wrecks which have become popular objects for these photographers and artists. Bicycle Graveyard This footage is not a work of art on purpose. But you are seeing a footage from the Bicycle Cemetery, located in Hangzhou, China. The footage is the result of aerial imaging of thousands of bicycles that are still in proper conditions. Thousands of bicycles were deliberately placed in the open to find or to field on the outskirts of the very busy city. The unwanted bicycles were secured by police following an explosion in the bicycle population after the local government launched a joint bicycle program. In general, using bicycles together is a good thing for a city that carries an environmentally friendly theme. This has left a problem for Hangzhou, which is inhabited by around 9 million people. Initially, the program ran smoothly when the government launched a program worth $24 million in 2008. This program aims to reduce air pollution levels. Locals are expected to be willing to leave their cars at home and use the bicycle provided free by the government, cycle to their destination, locations, and place them at the approximately 30,000 bicycle stops that have been provided after use. The program was a huge success, winning a transportation award and cutting air pollution by more than 110 tons. Unfortunately, all this changed when a number of private companies took part by providing bicycles that did not need to be returned to the bicycle shops. The use of this service allows the public to use each other's bicycles without having to bother to get to bicycle stops as is done by the government. The principle is the same as using the GoGet application. Every party wishing to get a bicycle needs a special application on their cell phone, a QR code, and a password. Although this application is gaining popularity, this has caused protest from the townspeople themselves. More than 23,000 bicycles were finally secured by the police and collected in a field since March last year. This is due to many complaints stating that the number of existing bicycles have exceeded capacity. Private bicycle service providers are continuing their business despite the police and the Hangzhou government using violent means to solve the problem. The footage we are currently looking at may look very artistic, but it certainly holds a sad story of how hard the efforts have been to make a city more environmentally friendly.